Hey, welcome back to the porch. It's getting to be uh, summer here now, finally. There's a warm wind blowing through our porch. Um, today I want to share with you about uh, pandemic nurses because um, a lot of people are fixated on other things this June, but we have got to remember our nurses, pray for them, and make sure that our hospitals and our country take care of them better because they really serve us uh, in this time of pandemic and uh, we got to show our love back. We've done it in the past. We need to continue to do that through this hot summer. I came across an article from ARP called Nurses on the Front Line. Okay, um, subtitled Among the Many Heroes During the Pandemic, Women and Men My Age, a little younger and older, have been uh, taken on a critical role and uh, I want to read about them. When COVID-19 attacked America, remember, uh, nurses and other health care professionals immediately became our first line of defense. They have been compared to the firefighters and police who responded on 9-11. In some places like New York City, nurses were plunged overnight into desperate struggles to save lives. In other places from Maryland to Minnesota, they work uh, to test as many people as possible to stop the spread of the virus and to prepare their hospitals and clinics for the inevitable onslaughts. By mid-April, you know, thousands of healthcare workers around the world had contracted the virus. In the U.S., several nurses and doctors had died after treating infected patients and the toll was rising. It still is rising. Still, most nurses approached the uh, crisis with calm courage and a quiet determination to help these afflicted with the virus. I have several nurses in my family, especially on my mother's, uh, my father's side, excuse me, but also on my mother's side. One of mine um, out in Oregon is Francine Stoda, and she's been called um, in her hospital to take uh, backup for certain things, and she's even a pediatric nurse. So uh, we have to pray for these people, but also make sure that the uh, supplies get to them better. We understand that there are some supplies building up, but we're also aware that there have been stockpiles and that the CDC has reduced the guidelines for hospitals, uh, not telling them that they have to abide by uh, rules that were in effect before February of 2020. They need to be put back in place. We need to have enough N95 masks to switch off daily, at least, if not uh, one-time use situation, for example. We also need to make sure we have enough uh, uh, clothing and uh, PP, uh, you know, personal gear for them. Okay, let's talk about uh, one of the nurses in this article. One is uh, Robin Krinsky. She's 60, and the, she's a clinical nurse at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. She says, I have been a nurse since the beginning of the AIDS crisis. That was nothing compared to this. That was uh, the rise of the coronavirus has been so rapid, so vicious. Everyone on the front line is exposed to the virus. The pregnant nurse, the nurse with an underlying condition, the older nurse, the healthy nurse, everybody is on the ledge or on an edge. My duties used to be logical and organized. Now it's hectic. I describe it as organized chaos. I don't know what I am going to walk into. Everything is ominous. I just want to make sure my patients are breathing. This is the new normal. I haven't heard one nurse threaten to quit because of the potential danger. Our biggest challenge is that we must treat coronavirus patients with no treatments available. If someone has the flu, you give them Tamiflu. If someone has coronavirus, there's nothing you can give them like that. The worst part of my day is this. Every day we find out how many patients are coronavirus positive. Those who die, those on ventilators. We find out how many nurses are virus positive or who are quarantined because they are symptomatic. Every day those numbers rise and you can see them on computers and news reports across the nation. It reminds us of the Vietnam War when the casualty numbers were released every day. I have not been tested for the virus. We don't have enough tests in New York still for all healthcare per personnel. I don't care about the consequences. I won't stop doing what I do. Nurses are leaders during disasters and the coronavirus is the ultimate disaster. We don't walk away. Amazing people we have around us. 
like angels. Uh, another uh, one who's about my age is uh, Jacques Wall. He's 56, a registered nurse. He has worked since 2012 in the emergency room at Abbott Northwestern Hospital in Minneapolis. It has been a steep learning curve for us, he says. The first week or so that we were trying to navigate this, we didn't have a good solid plan or how, on how to handle patients. We didn't know exactly how the virus spread. Because of a limited number of test supplies, the only patients getting tested are those who are symptomatic or going to the hospital, be hospitalized. If they're stable, they're sent home and told to quarantine for two weeks. We understand that the supply is a little bit better than that now, uh, but who knows if there's another uh, onslaught of this virus. Uh, we're still in the early stages of this. If we get hit tomorrow, I'm not all at all confident we have what we need to keep us safe. When I'm working in triage, I immediately escort the patient back to one of our negative pressure rooms if it's open. The air gets pulled out of the room and goes through our ventilator, ventilation system and it's filtered. We've changed several of our, ear, our rooms to be able to do that. I'm concerned about lung scarring because it attacks the lungs pretty hard. I had a teenage boy here a week and a half ago who was very anxious. He had asthma and the physician thought he could have COVID-19 issues. The boy said at least three or four times even as he was vomiting at one point. Thank you so much. It, rem it is remarkable for, bull for a kid this age to show that sort of appreciation. That's the stuff that feeds the soul. This bonding moment when they're feeling vulnerable. Uh, let me read another nurse's story. This is from Carrie Hedges. She's 58. She's my age, exactly. She's a registered nurse at Suburban Hospital, a Johns Hopkins Health System uh, Hospital in Bethesda, Maryland. She says, when the outbreak hit, all the elective surgeries were canceled. So I became part of a crew testing people for COVID-19 coronaviruses. People who have symptoms consistent with the virus and have a doctor's order drive up at an appointed time. I insert a nasal swab into the patient's nasal pharynx and rotate it, yes, um, for about 10 to 15 seconds, which can be uncomfortable. The specimen is then sent to the hospital's lab. You can see anxiety on people's faces. Most handle it well. A couple have been in tears because they fear the results. Certainly we feel for them. We're hearing that about 17% of the tests are coming back positive. I feel reasonably safe. My hospital has had enough personnel uh, protective equipment. I wear double gloves, an N95 mask, a face shield, and a gown. Of course, we don't know everything about how the virus is transmitted. So yes, there is some concern about being around people who might have it. A couple of months ago, I would have never guessed I would be helping run a COVID-19 testing center. When the outbreak was first getting serious, people spontaneously brought protective equipment to the hospital and donated it. And another day, people showed up and cheered the staff. That lifted our spirits. Yeah, this is the focus we need to continue having. Um, lifting the spirits of those people who are serving us and uh, trying not to get sick. Um, staying away from others, social uh, distancing or physical distancing is a better word for it. Another person about my age is Carol Trutz. She's 51 and she works out of Lehigh Valley Hospital, Pocono, a community hospital in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. She has been a registered nurse for 35, I mean 29 years. We get the sickest of patients who need to be intubated and on ventilators. A lot of what we're trying is learning, is a learning curve. What we first learned from China and Italy. If someone is on a ventilator and awake, they're often trying to fight it. So they are sedated for, for comfort, to give their bodies time to rest. We do mouth care every two hours and turn them so they don't get bed sores. It's all compounded by the fact we have to go in with isolation gear. We're doing the best we can with what we have. We have a shortage of supplies, but no shortage of patients. We wear a surgical mask over our N95 masks to preserve the N95s because we're using them over and over. 
They're supposed to be a single use, but we've been told we can use them up to three days. Two nights ago, we had shoe covers, but last night there were none. It's hit or miss with what we'll get. I'm in that target age group of 51 years. I worry I will bring something home to my husband and two children. I worry I won't be able to go back to Connecticut to see my dad. He's 78 years old, not in good health. A prime target for COVID-19. After being a nurse for 29 years, it is difficult to be faced with this situation and not necessarily be able to help. It's always rough when a patient dies, but when, now with so many dying, it's, yes, yeah, so many are still dying in America. Even if the uh, curve is flattening, that means it's not going down. The number of cases are still there. Uh, it's very heart wrenching. Wrenching. All of us fear what will be like when this passes. Are we going to be a bunch of PTS zombies? That's what she asked. Um, Francis, uh, Francisco Diaz, 54, is a nurse practitioner at Mount Sinai Morning Hospital in New York City. Uh, this is him. Um, until the COVID-19 crisis, I was working as a nurse with diabetes patients. My brushes with epidemics have been limited. Not now. I'm working 12-hour shifts and worrying about bringing home the infection. In my new assignment, I monitor patients for pneumonia. Many of them have COVID-19. I am also trained to have conversations with immigrant families. I'm one of the few Hispanics and Spanish speakers in a small department. Families of the sick need to speak with me. Because of our shared ethnicity, they trust me. I'm not afraid of the virus. I'm afraid I won't be able to continue working if I contact it. contract it. I know a colleague who is sick with COVID-19. It is part of the deal. But I already assume that I carry the virus. It's easier that way. I'm more careful thinking like that because I don't want to spread it. COVID-19 has changed our working environment. Before we had the luxury of not wearing protective gear. We have to consider the amount we use, how long we use it. We worry if we have enough mask, enough sanitizer. The hospital has made it clear that we should not work in compromised conditions. Still, the challenges are enormous. All right, so we have uh, working with limited protection is finally uh, Penny Blake. She's 63 years old. So again, my cousin is about 